Before I tell you about my plate to plate pilgrimage, I want to talk a little bit about this, this picture from the New York Times. It's illustrating the part of a trip that brings travelers the most satisfaction anticipation. That's what the studies show. She's saying, what a great trip and I'm not even there yet. And I understand that anticipation can be the greatest part of a trip, but it wasn't for me. What I felt before leaving was dread. People think I love to travel, but what I really like is living in a country the way I did in Tonga for two years. Spain for a year, Algeria for two years, but I wouldn't be living. I'd be traveling to and through, always on the Camino, never really part of a community. I was going to see European friends I loved, and I was dreading the very thought of it, because among other things, they were trilingual. And even though I speak French and Spanish, I speak French and Spanish in a way that could annoy the French and Spanish, and I don't speak German at all. Also, while my friends and my friend and official Camino partner Bill knew all about me, beyond his point of tolerance, I feared, my French, Spanish, and German friends had never traveled with the vegan me. Before I met up with them, I would be a vegan pilgrim walking, walking long days in Galicia, a meat-heavy region of Spain where they probably hated vegans and would want me to starve. So when one of my sisters asked me what I was most looking forward to in anticipation, I said, coming back. I was stuck in a rut and I loved it. My two-hour breakfast buffet of books every morning in the living room in front of the fireplace. Battery run, oversized candles on the grate. I was leaving behind everything of comfort. My view of the Bougainvillea and the ocean out the window looking west. And my view of the Tibuchin in my garden looking east. For a lot of meat-loving Spain and a little of meat and cheese-eating France. In preparation for the Camino, I'd walked all over San Francisco with my walking partner, Bill, and sometimes Janet, and I loved that. But I'd done it in English and with a full stomach. In Spain and France, I would annoy people by what came out of my mouth and what I refused to put in it. To bet I no longer believed that animals romped happily and had a good life before they landed on my plate. To bet I'd learned so much about the suffering of animals in dairy farms. To bet I'd learned about the depletion of the oceans and the environmental problems created by livestock. To bet I'd learned what cage-free really means. To bet I'd learned that Oprah Winfrey's concept of cows grazing in the fields was not sustainable for feeding the more than seven billion people not as privileged as Oprah Winfrey. I had told Ani and Rosa about the new vegan me in advance in an email message saying, I'm coming out of the cupboard, I'm vegan. I told my German friend Jutta too about my being a vegan, but only in the diary we shared. And since I was bringing it with me, she hadn't seen that revelation. I learned to say, hello, my name is Vegan Freak in French and Spanish. Bonjour, je m'appelle Bette Curieuse Vegetalien and hola, me llamo Bicho Raro Vegano. Back in my Peace Corps days, I, I heard about culture shock, but I never had it in Tonga or in Algeria. I just provided it for other people, the Tongans and the Algerians. So I worried about doing that in Europe. But, and here you have the plot spoiler, this turned out to be one of the best trips of my life, this plate to plate pilgrimage with my friends. And you'll see that there's a lot to celebrate in this world of ours that is evolving in some very positive and delicious ways. There are also some moments and plates that can best be remembered as humorous. But before I take you back to early September, I want to mention two of the people who provided support and inspiration. 
If you've seen the Camino de Northern Spain video, you'll have seen Tom's incredible vegan paella. And Jana and Jeff also had Bill and me over along with Tom for a delicious vegan friendly meal before we took off. So we had sustenance of that sort. <laughs> and in Art of the Pilgrimage, Phil Cousineau said that leaving on pilgrimage without a blessing was inconceivable. He got one from Joseph Campbell, his mentor. He suggested getting the blessings of someone older, and I had to think a few minutes who was older than I was. Then I thought of Libby. She's the lovely vegan woman I met at a Christmas party uh, several years ago, where she and I were the only ones who didn't eat meat. And since then, we'd exchanged email letters, sharing recipes and describing our epiphanies, what led to our becoming vegans. So we corresponded and she suggested that I take along a lot of nuts. <laughs> I also did some online search for what the Camino was like for vegans. And I found this remarkable young Spaniard, Pedro Jesus Lopez Toribio, who biked the Camino de Santiago nonstop in September 2014 to help dispel the idea that people who don't eat animals are weaklings. You see his I don't eat animal message. He biked about 485 miles from Roncesvalles in northern Spain near the French border to Santiago de Compostela, and he did this in 40 hours. So with that inspiration and following a vegan potluck I had at my house, and saying goodbye to Javier, my neke, mejor que un esposo, better than a husband, who's more enthusiastic about the vegan restaurants he takes me to, especially the Loving Hut, than he was about walking the Camino. I got the help of my friend Alma, packed my bags, mostly with books, it seems, and said goodbye to California, as well as to Javier where our governor was advising us to eat veggie burgers. And by the way, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the one who spoke up when they had that environmental congress in Paris in 2015, and the vegetarians were having a terrible time finding something to eat. The environment, you know, he spoke out and said we should all be eating less meat for the good of the environment. So, hey, what is it about California? Anyway, I had to leave. I had to leave. So after an airport visit with my son in New York City, I headed towards my plate to plate pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is an inward journey, says the foreword to the art of pilgrimage. And what could be more inward than what we eat? <laughs> Oh, we know how they starve you on flights, but they don't do that on international flights. And the Portuguese Airlines tap had my vegan dinner aligned with my seat number. It was pretty tasty too. A big improvement on how it used to be. Now that was from New York to Lisbon. But between Lisbon and Belbao, there was no vegan meal, turkey and cheese, nothing else. On the return trip, they would offer tuna for the short jaunt. This is what the official Pilgrim's Passport looks like. Pilgrims get it stamped at places they stop along the way. But I put photos in the place of stamps and kept the date and the location. I don't have photos of everything. Uh, the, my first meal, for example, in Spain was at the Cerveceria, where I had a grilled eggplant dish. Not on the menu, it pays to ask. And a Heineken both vegan. That was Thursday, September 1st, 2006. The next morning, Friday, September the 2nd, my walking partner Bill and I went to the Café de la Station del Tren, where I discovered tamaca, a tomato puree on toast smeared with olive oil and garlic. With the pine nuts I carried everywhere and tea on the side, it was a very satisfying breakfast. Spain has delicious tomatoes. Then at the Guggenheim in Bilbao, we had this snack, very good as well as beautiful. We went to a travel agency where they gave me this list of vegan restaurants, but we didn't find them open except for Kubrick. 
I wish they'd posted a sign of when they were open, because at the time that we went by, a couple looked like storage places instead of cafes or restaurants. And in the evening, we had a delicious dinner just a few yards from our hotel, Hartines. The server insisted that the word vegana didn't exist, only vegetariana, but I still had a delicious meal, de comida vegana, grilled peppers and grilled vegetable salad, olive oil is plentiful, and wine, very vegan. Remember to bring your own nuts, as my mentor Libby has suggested. Then Saturday, September the 3rd, the next night, still in Bilbao, we had a fantastic meal at Perro Chico, where they really know how to make vegan dishes. They even put a dollop of vegan ice cream, not sour cream, but ice cream, in the soup. Sunday, September 4th, we left Bilbao, and on our way to San Sebastian, we stopped at a place along the water where we had a surly server, so I went into the kitchen to talk to the cooks themselves. And then the owner, who was a very nice older woman, that is a woman my age, made me a vegan salad and kept thinking of new possibilities of things to add as she became conscious of what was and was not an animal product. Vegan outreach. <laughs> Canned white asparagus is big in Spain. The only thing really lacking were nuts, but those were available in stores. So as my mentor Libby suggested, I bought them in markets and carried them with me wherever I ate. In the evening, we had a wonderful meal in San Sebastian at this restaurant where there was a fixed menu, but the server listened, listened to my suggestions and had the cook make me a vegetable dish embellished with walnuts. A lot of hotels have breakfast buffets and we enjoyed several mornings of those. Then Monday, September the 5th, 2016, in our beautiful Hotel Nisa in San Sebastian, where I asked about leche de almendras, almond milk, they usually had soy instead, leche de soja. Am I failing to see that on the vegan passport? They sometimes have it out, but not labeled, and sometimes they have it in the kitchen, so we have to ask for it. There was usually lots of fruit, bread without animal products, and, and, and tomato puree. Most breakfast buffets had um, muesli. On our way from San Sebastian to Oviedo, we stopped at a truck stop called Café Barraquel, run by women. They also had a fixed menu, but could accommodate vegans. I just had to remind them that we don't eat tuna. Eat fish? I'm not that kind of girl. I hang around with Sylvia Earle. At night, we had this delicious meal in Oviedo. Tuesday morning, September 6, 2016, in our Hotel Batusta, they told us we could have anything for breakfast that we wanted. Days early, I'd bought some bananas that were now overripe because I'd been eating the ones at breakfast buffets. My bananas looked a lot like garbage, but the staff didn't even make a face, and at my request, they made me soy milk and banana shake, which was a lot better than the bananas looked. Of course, I also had tamaka, sometimes adding pine nuts and sometimes adding sunflower seeds. Bill and I walked to Casuso, a restaurant recommended by Michelin, to let them know that one of us was vegan. They invited us to come back later in the afternoon, and this is what we got. A sample almond drink, wine, white garlic, cold soup with almonds. Then our starter was samarejo, a puree like gazpacho, but consisting of bread as well as a tomato, olive oil, and vinegar, and originating in Cordoba. The main dish was rice with vegetables, risotto, mushrooms, dried fruit, broccoli, asparagus, snap peas, and red currants. Wednesday, September 7, 2016, we had lunch at Le Chigre, which was run by the brother of the owner of Casuzzo, right next door. At Le Chigre, there was a menu in indicating vegan dishes. And speaking of food, we heard that there was an ordinance against begging in Oviedo, so we looked into foundations feeding people who needed help, and we found this place, Comida Economica, Boca a Boca, where we made a donation. Then I bought more piñones, pine nuts. Thursday, September 8th, 2016, after Oviedo, we went to Leon, 
where we found a place with Tabena Piconera Menu del Peregrino, for pilgrims. The man running the restaurant thought at first that there was no way to serve me garbanzo beans because they were all soaked in pork. But then he thought of opening a can of them and he added them to my salad for more protein. He also offered, offered pasta con tomate and I added sunflower seeds. Kathy Freston, author of Vegani, Veganist, <laughs> Veganist, the one who got Oprah Winfrey and 385 of her staff members to go vegan for a week, has written open letters to restaurants explaining that vegans like more than pasta with tomato sauce, which would be a service for vegans in other countries. The Spanish often knew what to leave out, but not what to add. But in general, they were very friendly and accommodating. No complaints. Friday, September 9th, 2016 in Leon, we stayed at Eurostar and had a very nice breakfast. We had some trouble finding Santa Martino, the vegan friendly restaurant we heard about because it wasn't open earlier in the day and we couldn't find the sign for the square. But once we found it, the owner prepared a sumptuous meal of grilled vegetables. Saturday, September 10th, 2016, finally after 10 days of getting over jet lag, we arrived in Sobrero. The restaurant there was cozy and nice, but they didn't seem to know much about vegan cuisine. I always asked for olive oil for my bread and enjoyed both. When I asked for nuts, they brought me a bag of unshelled peanuts. For dessert, I got two oranges. Sunday, September 11, 2016, from Sobrero to Tria Castella, after breakfast of orange juice, toast, olive oil, tomatoes, tea, and my own pine nuts, we headed out in 6,000 miles from San Francisco. We met a couple from Marin County who walked with us and enjoyed the best gazpacho I've ever had. Once in Tria Castella, we ate at Complejo Siacobea, where I had a lamb dish minus the lamb. Sangria, mixed salad, fried potatoes, green beans, delicious. I do have a written account of every day plate to plate, but unfortunately I had no camera for several days. So the next pictures are of our destination, Santiago de Compostela, except for this photo, which represents Sabina, a very warm Spanish woman who had a little trouble understanding that I was a vegan, not a vegetarian. So she became a little frustrated with my saying no to eggs and no to cheese for breakfast. Finally, she asked, Senora, por favor, dígame, ¿qué puede comer? Please, miss, tell me, what can you eat? And when I told her, she was thrilled because she told us she grew tomatoes so delicious that you could hold one in your hand and eat it like an apple. After we arrived in Santiago and met the people that we'd gotten to know along the way and gotten our certificado for the 110 miles we'd walked using our pilgrim passport, we found a Parador dos Reis where we were the first to arrive at 1 p.m. and the vegan dishes were delicious. So was the cava. Good nourishment before the church service that night when we got to see the Boda Fumero. Then on Sunday, we stayed on the square by the cathedral and had pimientos de padrón and tostado con verduras and, of course, wine. They had a sign in Galician of Virginia Woolf's comment that one cannot think well, love well, sleep well if one has not dined well. I was trying not to show photos too graphic, but throughout northern Spain, there were photos against bullfighting. This sign was taking a stand against the Torneo del Toro de la Vega, where people on horseback and on foot stab a bull to death, and the person who stab, which can also be a gunshot, is the fatal blow, gets to cut off the bull's testicles, impaled on the tip of his spear, and parade them around. Then in the evening, we ate at Entre Pedras, known for its delicious vegetarian and vegan dishes. My last morning in Santiago at the Hotel Universal, they had leche sin lactosa. And I didn't realize at the time that this is really milk. It just has the lactose taken out. So it's not really a vegan product. Uh, then at the airport, I had the only experience I had where I really couldn't find a vegan entree. 
when I was leaving Santiago for Madrid, the airport had no salads without animal products. Everything was already packaged. So I bought two packages of nuts, not usually considered an entree. But oh, what a wonderful evening meal I had when Ani, Rosa, and I were together in Madrid the first evening. Rosa had brought along a list of all the vegan and vegetarian restaurants in Madrid. Donde comer vegano in Madrid y no morir en el intento. Where to eat in Madrid and not die of hunger while trying. We ate at Viva Burger where the motto is eat positive. Look at this plant-based hamburger. Pretty positive. <laughs> The next morning we had breakfast at a place called La Parilla de Galicia, just a few do steps from the, our door of Tirso de Molina. Tamaca, orange juice, tea. Then we went to a museum where an employee heard us discussing where to eat lunch and she enthusiastically recommended Al Natural, which is where we went and had good vegan fare. We ate at Botanique as well, another excellent place. A lot of young people in Madrid like vegan. We ate at Pinocchio's near Museo Reina Sofia and had a dinner snack at Bombay Bleu on Plaza Tirso de Molina, but that was more vegetarian than vegan, as Indian cuisine usually is. Then in Toledo, Ani and I ate at Hacienda Restaurante El Cardenal, gazpacho and bread. And then back in Madrid on Calle de Ballesta, the street where I stayed for two weeks in 1976, we had the best tortilla de patatas, potato omelet, that we'd ever had at B13, B13, a vegan restaurant countering the, countering the adage that you can't have an omelet without breaking eggs. This was absolutely fantastic and Ani felt the same way. She's not a vegan or a vegetarian. The next day, Saturday, Ani and I ate at the airport in Madrid before our flight to Paris. She had something pricey at Paul's, which didn't offer much in the way of vegan dishes. So I wound up at McDonald's and guess what? They had gazpacho and were willing to make me a salad without dairy or meat. I also had French fries, it was fine. Later that night, Ani, her friend Catherine and I ate at Cafe Ginger, where we met a newly vegan couple from Davis, California. They had become vegan because they learned it was, be it was healthier. We had a lovely little studio overlooking the cemetery of Montparnasse on the Rue de Gaeté. So we had lunch right there on that street at La Palmeraie. Vegetarian couscous and thé à la menthe. Very symbolic because Jean, who introduced Ani and me, is a man I met in Algeria and a man Ani met in Morocco. And couscous is the main dish in North Africa. In the French published book, Paris Végétarien, they do a play on words with vegetate and say, Paris ne végète plus et c'est tant mieux. Paris is no longer vegetating in terms of being an active in the vegan and vegetarian movement, and so much the better. So on Monday, November 26, 2016, Yuta and I went to FNAC, a bookstore in Paris, where I got screenplays and took a look to see what books they had on vegan restaurants. This is what I found. When I was talking to a staff member there, I showed her my book, and she said she was a vegan and would like to order it for FNAC. So she looked, took down the information. Yuta and I ate at Saveur Végétal at 41 Rue de Bourdonnais in Paris before meeting Betsy and Sal, friends from San Francisco, at Angelina, which really didn't have anything vegan. Then we had dinner with Ani at Le Grenier de Notre Dame, which is on the cover of Vegetarian Paris. Then on Tuesday, September 27th, Yuta went to the market and prepared us a beautiful breakfast. She also gave me a gift, remoulade, really good and 100% vegan. Then I said goodbye to her and then to Ani, but feeling a still present glow. Then I flew to, from Paris to New York City where my son Jonathan met me and we got an enormous salad, 10 ingredients at Le Bon Café in Penn Station before going to Jonathan's apartment. 
Then Wednesday, September 28th, I bought walnuts and cashews at Gristidi's on Columbus near Jonathan's place, but pine nuts were $15. I had tea and vegan dessert at Blossoms just across the street. And later Jonathan, his friend Kathleen and I ate at the vegan restaurant Beyond Sushi at 62 West 5th Street. Very tasty. Thursday, September 29th, we saw The New Yorker, October 3rd, full page on Ravi de Rossi's new vegan restaurant, Ladybird. Jonathan managed to get us reservations for the following night. I ate lunch at Peace Food at Amsterdam on 82nd. I ordered the Japanese pumpkin balanced tea. Then Jonathan and I had dinner at Candle Cafe at 2427 Broadway, a very good meal at Counter Bar before we walked to Spamilton. Friday, September 30th, my friend Jim and I ate at Saravana Brahman, where the service was very slow, which suited us because we had plenty of time to talk. The service knew the difference between vegetarian and vegan and told me what wasn't vegan, but most was. Jonathan, his girlfriend Diana, and I ate at Ladybird at 127 McDougall near 6th in the evening. It was a real meal, mostly of tapas, but his avocado drink was really good too. Not quite, but almost a meal in itself. I felt good about patronizing Ravi de Rossi, who founded Beast, Benefits to End Animal Suffering Today. He's converting all of his restaurants into vegan ones. Saturday, October 1st, 2016, ate at Ayurveda's with French friends Isabelle and Thomas, who came in from Brooklyn, not Paris. Later, my nephew Carl joined us and we went to Plaza Food Hall on 59th and 5th Central Park for cake for Carl's July birthday, a little behind. I don't think it was vegan, but next time. Later, we all went to the New York Towers apartment of Mateo's lovely grandmother, and then Jonathan, Diana, Carl, Angela, Mesh, Mateo, Michael, Allison, and I all ate at my Chloe, which I thought was wonderful. I saw later that Chloe, the beautiful young woman who started these vegan restaurants, was named Person of the Year by Veg News. So now I keep my vegan passport on a scallop shell along with several books, including Le Cri de la Carotte, which has an introduction by the mayor of the second arrondissement of Paris, the city where COP21 was so unaccommodating to vegetarians in 2015. He and the French Green Party give me hope. Other people do too. So I want to express my gratitude to people who were willing to try vegan plates with me on my vegan pilgrimage, good for animals, good for the environment, good for health, and our happiness. It's a wonderful road to be on. Here I am, the happy vegan on the trip that turned out to be one of the best experiences of my life, thanks to friendly and accommodating attitudes of the people we met in Spain, France, and New York and open and adventurous spirit of my friends. Oh, and on my other fear that I would annoy people when I tried to speak their language, in Spain, France, and New York City, the natives recognized my Spanish, French, or English as a version of their own, and we communicated well between mouthfuls, plate to plate. <laughs>